There's a few news stories that I thought were interesting. Um, let's see if I can... Uh, that's New York Times. That's right. I've got it in my other browser. Um, but the point is, this is pretty amazing. Um, the... Yeah. Uh, Kashmir Hill who has the sense, by the way, to write under a fake name and always use a fake name and nobody knows her real name. The only other person around this smart is Moxie Marlinspike, a security researcher who also chose a fake name and worked only under a fake name, which is a very good policy, by the way. Um, anyway, she has really done well. Now she had a cover story in the New York Times a few days ago exposing how cars send your data secretly to insurance companies that use it to track you. So as a result of that, General Motors has now quit take, doing sharing their data. So it shows you how powerful you are, and this is extremely common. The companies are doing something awful, and they continue doing it until they get caught by a major uh, press, and then suddenly they, they discover that this is a bad idea and quit doing it. So uh, that's interesting. And so um, Elon Musk a couple days ago announced, or I might have, might have actually been announced earlier, but it hit the press a couple days ago, his first patient with the Neuralink brain chip is available and he says I can now play video games with my mind he's a paralyzed guy he can not move anything below his shoulders and now he can play video games. he says I was up till six last night playing video games with my mind so he's achieved the the ultimate of human uh, happiness mm -hmm. and uh, so anyway and the thing I thought when I is that this is not really that new you know I did this 30 years ago I went to like a future fair in San Francisco and they had this headband you would wear it would connect you to a Commodore VIC 64 and it would pick up the motion of the muscles in your head you could move a little balloon around you, you it didn't have to go into your brain or anything but it, you could just think about things and it would move and um, biofeedback was big then you'd try to like change your blood pressure or heartbeat or something and you could do that to some extent and move video games or things around anyway and so there's uh, these guys in Sydney also say they're miles ahead of his Neuralink you know this has been around for a while, um, various kinds of implants and various different ways of implanting them. Anyway, it's certainly very valuable for paralyzed people. And someday, when they get really good at it, you might even want it for people who do not have medical problems, just so you can have a Google chip in your brain and instead of carrying around a cell phone. That was, uh, anyway. So it's, it's worth knowing various people are doing this. And these people talk about how they have ways to uh, sneak in without without uh, having to have open brain surgery. They can sneak in through the blood vessels or something. Um, so anyway, various people are doing this, but Neuralink is of course the most famous because of Elon Musk. And you know, if he if he is as successful as that as he was with the rockets of SpaceX or something, it might be the cool way to do it. Um, you never know where you're gonna get the good Elon Musk or the bad Elon Musk. I heard a podcast and they were saying, you know, I miss the old Elon. Old Elon, like a few years ago, was just this genius making cars and rockets. Now he's this raving right winger lying about vaccines and picking on trans people and stuff. I wish you'd knock this off and go back to just making cars and rockets. So um, this I thought was pretty amusing. All my life, the UFO thing has been coming over and over and over again, official military investigations. And if you saw this movie, The Men Who Stare at Sheep, there have been official parapsychology, mental, psychic warfare uh, programs in America and in Russia and in Nazi Germany. They have a special division now and then where people get together and try to develop telepathy and stuff. It's all garbage, of course. And um, so this guy quit heading the Pentagon, he ran the UFO task force, and he concluded there are no aliens. This is all garbage. And therefore, he is now hated and hunted and death threats and everything. Um, he quit because now it's very too dangerous to run this and everything. You know, you know, I thought I'd be in danger in Iraq, but if you really want people to hate you, tell them there's no UFOs. And it's like telling you there's no Santa Claus. Anyway, um, people threat far more than I ever had as the deputy director of the intelligence for U.S. Strategic Command. I get far more threats and it's attacking my kids and wife and everything. So this is a bad time. Um, around the Civil War, it was like this in America too. Everybody was just madder than hell. And, uh, and as, you, as I think Nikki Haley found out, uh, the worst thing you can do is be in the middle. If you're in the middle, then everybody hates you. <laughs> if, if you pick... You have to pick one side or the other, then only half of everybody hates you, and those are your only choices. Anyway, uh, um, let's all block this garbage and close this garbage. All right, so the Mercury News. Uh, a while ago, I found out how hard it is to get insurance. I moved to an apartment, and they had to get fire insurance, and I couldn't get it. It was hard. I, I In fact, I called uh, 
one of the major insurance brokers and all their offices were not taking phone calls. They were out of business that day. Insurance brokers were amazed. They couldn't get through. What's going on? Well, I knew what was going on. There had been yet another fire, and all the insurance brokers are fleeing the state because the risk of having a home in California has suddenly become much larger, and nobody knows how much larger, so they don't know what to charge you. All they know is if they keep charging you what they used to charge you, they're going to go broke. They need to double or triple it or something, and they don't know how big the risk is. They don't know how fast the risk is going to keep going up. So logic says it's better to leave, and now they're doing it again. Now they're going to, they've canceled 72,000 policies. People have a home that wasn't insured, now they're not insured anymore. And uh, they don't give us details, but people say these are probably, it's like 2% of them. These are probably the ones in the highest fire risk areas. But um, that's that's climate change for you, you know. The climate change is real dramatic. I was a expert I saw... Um, I think I read an article and made a harder podcast about him. He said, I'm a climate scientist, and if you knew what I know, you would be much, much, much more afraid. And if you're not afraid, that means you haven't looked into this at all. Because, you know, this is what Al Gore pointed out decades ago. The level of CO2 in the air was nothing, and it started going up, like, insanely. Now it's way up where it never should have been, and it's going up faster than it ever has. And he said, you know, there's never been any time when, we, when anything has ever affected the climate like this. And uh, anyway... We really need to quit burning all these fossil fuels, but there's no sign of that happening anytime soon. So let's, I saw a cartoon where they had this guy with a time machine. He said, zap, did you, and he comes back, did you tell them? He said, yeah, I told them, and they know, but they don't care, <laughs> which is pretty much it. Anyway, um, so this one was pretty interesting. There are, if you do computing, if you do in cryptography, there is a timing side channel is a very difficult problem to fix. If you do a calculation where you have a key that's a bunch of bits, ones and zeros, and then you're doing something like multiplying something by the key, well then when you hit a bit that's zero, you don't need to do anything. If the bit is one, you have to do something. So if you write your code, the key that has a lot of ones will take longer than the key that has a lot of zeros. And that means the time it takes to compute leaks out information about the secret key, which is the timing side channel. Therefore, there are tricks to make constant time code, which means you're wasting time. You're wasting time doing calculations you don't need to do to make sure it takes the same amount of time. So since you, to get over that, they put hardware in just to perform constant time computation. And then they tried to optimize it. And the end result is there's special processes in the hardware to do this calculation. And it turns out they leak us to the side channel. Um, there is a side channel. This has happened over and over again. All, and to fix this, they cannot fix the chips. It's in the M1 and the M2, the Apple silicon chips. It leaks the secrets out of the supposedly secure enclave where secrets are supposed to be, and you can pump them out. And the um, there's a chart here showing how long it takes. Yeah, there you are. So it can crack an RSA key in, um, I think, 26 minutes. And then 600 minutes to click a dilithium-2 key out, which is the post-quantum cryptography. So, that, of course, they have to have malware running on your machine to do this, to get the accurate timing. So you could argue it doesn't really matter, but it does, because there was supposed to be secure key storage, and it's not that secure, and it can't be fixed. It's in the chip. In order to fix it, you have to change the firmware outside the chip, and that will slow it down by a factor of two. And the same thing already happened with Spectre and Meltdown, which were very similar flaws in all modern processors, where speculative execution is where the process... I remember teaching this like 20 years ago and seen it 100 and thinking, this is insane. Modern processors do not do one instruction at a time. They do pipelining, where one instruction starts getting processed, and before it's done, another one starts, and another one starts, until there are 20 going through in the pipeline, going through stages of processing. So what this means is, if the instruction you're executing is, if something is less than zero, branch, then it doesn't figure that out until 19 instructions pass on the wrong side of the branch you're already going through the processor. So this means things you were not supposed to do are in fact getting done to some extent. And they leave traces you can pick up. That's speculative execution. And um, it turns out that they leave traces in the registers and stuff that you can see. So you can look several instructions past an if statement that you fail, including the one that is the security boundary. Are you authorized to do the next thing? If not, go here. Well, 19 steps went to where you weren't allowed to go, and you can deduce things about it. That's um, the specter. 
speculative execution. And Meltdown was another. And these were the same. You couldn't pass the chip. It was the fundamental. The only thing to do is either turn off the speeding up features of the chip, which were really expensive, or write to compensate otherwise. And when this came out, it slowed down cloud servers so much that the cloud providers that I went to started giving you twice as much RAM for free. Because you, your performance went way down when you turn it on. Every time you boot up a VM, it'll say, uh, we have implemented mitigations for speculative execution, which means your VM is going to be slow. Is that okay or not? <laughs> and so, anyway, looks like the M1 and M2 have a similar issue, where there's going to be an update, where if you put on the update, you'll be more secure, but it'll slow you down. They say the M3 is vulnerable, but it won't slow it down as much somehow. So, um, anyway... Interesting information, and this always happens. This is why I was kind of uh, concerned when they had, um, when people started talking about going to post quantum cryptography, because I saw the post quantum cryptography routines get nuked. And so I said, but they're probably not ready yet. But Google now came out with their threat analysis, and they expect quantum computers to crack the old encryption, like RSA, within 10 to 15 years. And that means we really have to move now to the next one. And, but they did have the right advice, which is, don't just switch to one of these. Do two layers of encryption, one with these and one with those. That is the thing you do. Then they would both have to break. That is Because you can't really trust this, and you can't really trust that either. So the best you can do is encrypt your stuff twice so that you're safe unless they both fall, which is also not impossible, but it's the best you can reasonably do. So that's probably where we're all headed. Anyway, um, let me stop this for